The tomb is dark but empty. Let me say it again. The screen is dark but empty. The tomb is dark but empty. The stone has been rolled away. The burial clothes are put aside. Christ is risen. Let us worship our risen Savior. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. seated in the presence of the Lord as we give thanks on this day that truly he lives amen we serve a risen Savior and truly he is in the world today I invite you to join your heart with mine as we pray this this morning loving and gracious God we come this resurrection Sunday morning we come early as the women came to the tomb seeking to find the one on a 
Friday they had laid to rest. But there was good news from the tomb and there's good news on this day that the one they came seeking after was faithful and God was faithful through him. That on today they would find that Jesus is the Christ, he is Lord, he is Savior, and he had risen from the dead. And because of the great gift of his being raised on this day, God, we too are being raised up to know that we are more than conquerors. We thank you for our awakening this day in time and not in eternity to see not only the dawning of a brand new day, but to embrace your blessings of this day. Not only is there health, strength in mind, but also, God, on this day, there's your grace and there's your love and there's your peace. And there's a, God, there's just a moment right now for being grateful. So as we gather as siblings in faith, as we come as your children, God, stir up within us the gift of praise and the gift of worship. Allow our minds to drift to that place. We give you our thanks and we give you the glory for the great thing you have done. God, he could have just died on Good Friday. That would have made him our savior. He would have been the sacrificial lamb. But that was not enough. He needed to become our Lord. And so we bless you on today. God, we thank you for all the gifts you have given unto us. We thank you for the gift of salvation. We thank you, Lord God, that on this day we are new creations in Christ Jesus. So as we gather in this moment, early in the morning as birds have been singing in the trees this morning may we lift our voices may we lift our hearts in celebration for we are grateful this day mighty mighty grateful and God visit upon us each one in this space and across the platforms God visit this morning every household of faith that is gathering for a sunrise celebration and in those places, God, let, let joy live and let joy be alive and let hope live and let hope be alive and let praise and celebration and worship occur on this day like never before. For we didn't get up this morning this early just because. We got up, God, because we wanted to let you know who first loved us that we love you. So in this space, have your way, Lord. Thank you for the week you brought us through. Thank you for valleys we've gone through, but you're helping us to ascend to the mountaintop. Thank you for the sweet release and relief that has come. Thank you for tears that have fallen that remind us, God, you are cleansing us and you are strengthening us and you are empowering us to feel our emotions. Thank you, Lord God, for visitation in hospitals and nursing homes. Thank you, Lord God, for dropping by some addresses where there was need for some chaos to be put in order. Thank you, Lord God, for bringing some things to pass. Because you are a good God. So we just bless you in this space. We give you the honor, we give you the glory, and we give you the praise. Now, this is the prayer we ask in the only name I know to guarantee the answer. And that is the name of your son, our Savior. His name is Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we ask, we believe, and we rejoice. Because we know Jesus is. He is Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. He is Lord.
we certainly welcome you here on this beautiful, beautiful Easter Sunday morning at the sunrise service. And the sun, I can see by the shreds of light through the windows, is beginning to rise. Praise God and amen. All of the announcements for the St. Paul community are on our website and in our e-blast. Please, if you are not subscribing to the e-blast, please do so. We will lift up just one announcement. We are in the midst of an amazing campaign to clear out the stuff in St. Paul. <laughs> Removing the stuff day is April 13th, but we can't wait till that day to gather the stuff. So tomorrow is a gather the stuff day here at the church from noon to three. If you're able, we would appreciate your hands to help us pull up, pull through closets and gather stuff and mark it for removal. Everyone is welcome. And as always, if you have young people who need community service hours, we sign those forms with a smile. We thank Sister Odessa Holloman this morning for leading our call to worship. And we ask now that you rise as we hear our morning scripture. Our scripture this morning is John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still do not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said, these things to her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Now, we will... now join us in a hymn of preparation. Up from the grave, he arose. the grave hero 
take a pastoral liberty this morning. I was not ready to let loose of our, our response to morning prayer, just declaring he is Lord. Amen. I don't know where you might have been in that. So can we just kind of go back there for a moment and just declare who he is? I, for I need us to understand, I'm glad we got up and I, we put on our glad rags today. But let me assure you, it's not about your glad rags on Easter or Resurrection Sunday. Amen. But it is about declaring who God in Christ Jesus is. And on today, God's faithfulness is being proved. Amen. And so I just need for us to take a moment and just continue to create the atmosphere. Send a signal to the devil about what today is about in particular. And that is we declare with all that is within us, who is he? He is, he is Lord. Won't you make a sanctuary unto yourself and lift your voices? is Lord, He is Lord, He has risen from the grave, and He is Lord, every knee shall bow, every tongue stand and declare it's all right in this sanctuary to be able to stand and declare who he is to lift your hand and declare who he is he has risen from the grave Let's just 
Give the Lord some glory, some honor, and some praise on today. He's a worthy God on today. Amen. Who would have loved us so much? Who would have loved us so much? Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. 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 Beloved, on this high and this holy day, on this day of hallelujahs and happiness, on this day of triumph and thank you, Lord, on this very day, this day, siblings, that proves God's faithfulness yet once again, this Resurrection Sunday, Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed and truly. He is Lord. Amen. Though death and hell and the grave tried to hold Jesus, could not contain him. Though lies and deceit and hatred attempt to conquer him, could not do it. Though sin and evil and darkness tried to wrestle with him, couldn't do it. For the power of love is on full display today for all of the world to see as we who are siblings in faith, as we who are believers, proclaim that our God is faithful. God is trustworthy. God is God. And so siblings, family, and friends of God, happy Resurrection Sunday to you. Can we just take a few moments on today to celebrate the goodness of God in Christ Jesus? Can we take a few moments to offer our praise and our worship as we remember the gift of salvation that is granted to us on this day? Can we just take a few moments to offer some hallelujahs as we remember the blessings of being a new creation in Christ on today? The joy of knowing that we are more than conquerors through this Jesus. Today, I'd like to preach from our scripture lesson coming out of John chapter 20. And then the sermon thought for today is simply this, not done yet. Not done yet. Turn to your neighbor and say, not done yet. I need a little attitude in the morning. I need you to look at somebody and declare it. Not done yet. Will you pray with me? Let it breathe on me. Let it breathe on me. Let the breath of the Lord now breathe on me. Simple prayer, God, I ask in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. In his name we ask. Amen. Amen. And beloved, along my journey in ministry, I have been blessed with many wonderful opportunities to serve and lead and to be among God's people. Uh, one of the places of service that has provided me with wonderful opportunities has been through a conference event known now as Mission U, uh, formerly known as the Cooperative School of Christian Mission. This annual school was an event for all ages to engage in a biblical study, a geographical study, and a global issue of concern. Uh, typically, it lasted over three days. I have shared in the leadership of this mission school as an instructor as well as the dean in both the youth school and the adult school. I have been able to provide leadership through worship design as well as through music ministry, offering leadership and directing of the choir. One of the blessings about that is oftentimes I ran into the women of the mighty, mighty St. Paul who would be part of the music ministry over these three days as they attended Mission U or the Cooperative School of Christian Mission. One day I was at the mission school. I came down early uh, for breakfast and I was sitting by myself when eventually in time some youth joined me at the table. They sat across from me. We exchanged some pleasantries, some greetings, and then we continued to eat. We were enjoying our breakfast. 
Uh, this breakfast was like most mornings. It had the standards. There were some scrambled eggs. There was bacon and sausage. I don't mean to upset anyone who didn't have breakfast already. I'm sorry. But uh, there were some scrambled eggs. There was some bacon. There was some sausage. And they were serving on this particular day. They were serving French toast sticks. Uh, so one of the youth across from me began to just pour syrup all over his French toast sticks. And when I mean pour, I mean heaps and heaps of syrup. And then he proceeded to grab the French toast sticks with his fingers to eat them. First Lady Womble, everything in me wanted to scream. I wanted to scream, Minister Johnson, use your fork and knife. But I was reminded that these youth were not my youth. They were not my responsibility. They had an adult a chaperone somewhere, and it was not my place to take on table manners or table etiquette at seven in the morning. But because uh, he had piled mounds and mounds of syrup and was using his fingers to eat and enjoy his French toast sticks. All of my upbringing, Brother Chris, all of my sensibilities had been offended. They were on high alert. I was literally dying on the inside. But to the defense of the youth, he was of a generation that had been brought up. We have raised a generation that consumes finger food all day long. Come on now, let's tell the truth. At breakfast, we give them some tater tots and some hash brown finger food. We give them a breakfast sandwich. We give them donuts. We give them pastries. We give them breakfast bars, all bre uh, finger food. At lunchtime, they can have a hamburger or a hot dog or, or pizza, and then they can have it with some fries, and they drink it down with a soda, finger food. Then we turn around, and at dinner, we offer them a two-piece and a biscuit, finger food. But I <laughs> had been raised by parents to understand and embrace some table etiquette and some table manners. And uh, I, I knew the ins and outs about a, a table setting. Anybody was raised in that kind of an era where you knew some things about, oh, amen, amen, amen. In particular, I had a great aunt who made deposits in my life and in the lives of the younger generations uh, about understanding some table etiquette and some table manners. I had knowledge of what flatware was and how flatware should be used and how it was to be placed upon the table, as well as in addition to the placement of glassware or stemware. Some folks don't even know what I'm talking about when I say flatware or stemware or glassware, not to mention the placement of plates to understand that a dessert plate is not the same size as a salad plate and a salad plate is not the same size as your bread plate and your bread plate is not the same size as your dinner plate. I, I, was, I was made to understand that a juice glass is a very different size than an old-fashioned glass, and that's a very different size than a water glass or water goblet, and that's different than having a, a, a wine glass or a glass for sherry or whatever the saints may have. <laughs> so you can imagine the sheer horror that paralyzed my body when I saw the sight of his fingers going in to grab French toast sticks with his fingers. The reason I pressed this morning my claim around table manners and etiquette is because it is important, but it's also important for our scriptural texts. Because one could easily miss the message Jesus the Christ left in the empty tomb. Let me recall for you, in the tomb where Jesus once laid, 
uh, the scripture lesson and other scripture lessons support it, it begins to describe for us that uh, there were the strips of linen. In other words, there were the grave clothes Jesus once had on that were uh, uh, tossed over to one side. You might see it as a scene that in the empty tomb where Jesus was, in one place there's this, this mound, there's this heap, there's this, there's this uh, bundle of, of, of grave clothes that have just been uh, uh, discarded. But then we hear also that uh, there's another piece of, uh, of, of garment. There's another strip of cloth. Some Bibles uh, describe it as a kerchief or a handkerchief, or they describe it as a napkin. Uh, and it's in another place. Uh, uh, scripture lesson, other scripture lessons make it very clear, though. It was neatly folded and placed to the side. I need you to see the juxtaposition. Here is a heap of clothing Jesus had had on. Here are the grave clothes. They're in a pile. They're in a bundle. They're on one side of the grave. But yet to the side, there's this one piece. There's this one piece of cloth that is set aside, that is apart, and it's, it is neatly folded to itself. <sighs> Jesus was desiring to signal to us and to others that, well, let me do it this way. In the time of which Jesus lived, there was table etiquette as well. And you could send signals by your table etiquette. If you got up from the table or you wanted to signal to those who were serving you that you were finished, you might just get up from the table and you would take your napkin or the cloth you may have been using for dining and you just placed it. But if you wanted to let the servant know that uh, you may be continuing or there was more on the other side, you would take your napkin, you would take whatever it was, you would fold it neatly and you placed it down. Because a neatly folded handkerchief or a neatly folded napkin, a neatly folded piece of cloth and placed to the side was a signal to let them know I'm not done yet. See, if you don't know table etiquette, you don't know table matters, if you don't know what's being signaled, you would miss what Jesus was saying in the empty tomb. He had gotten up on the very day he had promised to get up. He'd gotten up from the grave as was promised and assured in scripture. But he left behind a sign and a symbol in the midst of all the messiness of the clothes, the grave clothes that are on the side. He had taken time, I'll go, to leave one piece that was folded and placed to the side. For he wanted folks to understand, those who could understand a sign and a symbol. He said, though I've gotten up, I'm not finished yet. And so on this Resurrection Sunday morning, I need us to get it in our hearts. I need us to get it in our spirits. I need us to get it in our lives. Jesus got up with all power and authority, but he also left the sign. I'm not finished yet. And I come this morning to declare unto each and every one of you, my siblings, in faith. It does not matter where you are. It does not matter the stage of life. It does not matter whether you're on the top of the mountain or in the valley. Jesus wants you to know, I'm not done yet. Oh, this early morning crowd is not, is not embracing this. I, I need you to understand. Jesus was basically saying to us, Jesus was saying, hey, Minister Johnson, I need you to know. I, I, I'm not done yet. Oh, no, you all aren't getting it yet. You're not getting it. You're not getting it. I, you're not getting it. He needs someone to understand that I, I, I have taken time out in my need to get up early in the morning, in my hurry, my hurry to get out of the grave. I, I've left some things in a messy pile, but I need you to have a signal. I need you to understand. I'm not done yet. And so I've come to say, to St. Paul, the mighty, mighty St. Paul, and everybody else who is gathered in the household of faith on this Resurrection Sunday, I need you to know wherever you may be in life, wherever you may be on your journey, Jesus is letting us know. There's a sign, there's a symbol, there's a reminder in the grave to let us know. I'm not done yet. The Lord and Savior took time out while getting up early to just place a napkin, a handkerchief, 
to the side, neatly folded, to let somebody know who understood table etiquette. I'm not done yet. Somebody needs to get that in their soul and spirit this morning. Wherever you may think you are, whatever is going on in your life, the Lord has declared, I'm not done yet. Oh, you're not getting it. Somebody got bad news this week, and it has been ripping at you. It has been tearing you down. It has not let you go. But the Lord is letting you know, "Mm -mm, mm -mm." look in the grave. There's a sign. I'm not done yet. Oh, but I've got struggles in my life. I've got strife. The Lord said, I'm not done yet. Oh, we got hills to climb and valleys to go through. I've got some, some things going on with my family. I've got things going on in my personal life. But the Lord is reminding us on this resurrection. Mm -mm. I'm not done yet. What about my family relationship? I'm not done yet. What about my finances? I'm not done yet. What about my career? I'm not done yet. What about all that I have dreams and plans for that seem to be dashed? I'm not done yet. And so, beloved, on this Resurrection Sunday, when you think about what the Lord has done, God gave us through Christ Jesus a sign and a symbol. He gave us something to hold on to even in the tomb. Yes, he got up with all power and authority. Yes, he's Lord and he is Savior. But he also said, but I'm not done yet. So here's my challenge. When you get home today, find yourself a napkin. And in some way in your house where every day you will pass by it, place it. If it's on your mantle, if it's on your bedside, if it's in your car, put it somewhere that every time you walk by it, you say, mm, he's not done yet. But the winds and the waves are beating. He's not done yet. You got more month than money. He's not done yet. The doctor has said he's not done yet. Teachers are saying my children will never. He's not done yet. My relationships are broken. He's not done yet. St. Paul, he's not done yet. Grace, he's not done yet. And so if there's celebration in the house on this day, it's got to be our claim. He's not done. And when folks ask you, how do you know? You tell the story. For as quickly as he was getting up out of the tomb and he left a messy pile to one side, he also placed a neatly folded, set aside napkin for those who would understand. I'm not finished. I'm not done yet in Jesus name amen 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 oh I think we can do better for a Lord who has told us that he's not done but I know it's early in the morning but I I think if you can get that in your spirit and get it in the depths of your soul that the Lord was declaring on a resurrection Sunday I'm not done yet even when others thought it was all over, he had done all he could do. He got up like he said he would. He still left the sign to say, but I'm not done yet. For the word of God declares that you and I would do even greater ministry and greater work in Christ Jesus. Which means that for all he had done, he would say there is still more to do. And so on this Resurrection Sunday, beloved siblings in Christ, I declare into our lives God is letting us know he's not done yet. There's still even greater. There's still more. There's still better. There's still higher that is in our lives. And so today we've got to claim it. We've got to claim it. We've got to believe it. We got to walk in it. Square your shoulders. Pull your head up high. Walk in that. He's not done. He's not done. When your friends start, he's not done yet. But it doesn't look like it's going to work out. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. He's not done. Go, go get your napkin and just wave it in front of him. He's not done yet. Get bold enough, but with the love of Jesus, say, I need you to sit down and shut up. He's not done. Done yet. And so because he's not done yet, 
we can keep on living. Because he's not done yet, we keep on facing whatever tomorrow will bring. Because he's not done, he's reminding us he's still in relationship and caring for us. And so we keep on pressing. Beloved, as we have gathered in this sacred space, I often remind us that what we do when we gather through all of our singing and our prayers and our preaching really is to drive us to this moment where God proves in Christ Jesus he really isn't done with us yet. And that is there is a, there's an introduction in the house on today. And that is for us to know this Jesus. And not so much that on today I need you to claim him as Lord and Savior, but just simply claim him as friend. Let's begin there. We can work on Lord and Savior. Those might be too deep. But if you're standing in need of a friend today who wants to whisper and confirm, whisper in your ear, confirm in your soul, he's not done with you, then on behalf of your siblings here, I invite you to receive this introduction. Now, let me explain something about introductions. You shouldn't be providing an introduction to someone you don't know yourself. I, I, I know it's good to talk about mama told you and daddy told you, but you ought to know for yourself who you're introducing. And so the one I want to introduce you to today is the one who in the midnight hour can turn things around because I've seen him do it. The one in the midnight hour when tears are rolling down my face still allows me, though, to still have joy. The one who allows me with each morning to have, to have happiness when I get up and ain't nothing around me to be happy about. And the one who allows me to sing a song to have joy. And the one who, when I'm driving around the beltway, if a right song comes on, the spiritual ugly cry can happen in a car. I'm talking about Jesus. If you would this day just take Jesus as your friend, I invite you to know you can raise your hand, stand at your seat, or come forward in sacred space. If you're joining us across the platforms, just type it into the chat. I am choosing Jesus today. If today you want to reaffirm your faith in Christ Jesus, you know what it is to walk with the Lord, but certainly life itself, life been life in. And you've been slowly distracted and eased away. But today, you would simply say, I know my friend. I'm reaffirming my faith in my friend. His name is Jesus. Or if you need a family, St. Paul's is a good family, but we can help you find a family in your neighborhood near you. If you need siblings in faith who walk this thing out with you, would you make that known today? Raise your hand, stand at your seat, or come forward in sacred space on this day. Type it in the chat. Is there? Is there one? Is there one? And then lastly, if you on this Resurrection Sunday want to come to the altar, and sometimes we, just, we make people think that if you're coming to the altar, it's all about your, your prayer concerns and, and your, your pleas before the Lord, and you got to uh, bring your, uh, uh, all the things that are burdening you. But sometimes we need to say, coming to the altar can be about, I want to bring my joys. I want to bring my victories. I want to bring my hallelujahs. I don't go down there because I'm always burdened. Or I go down sometimes. I just want to be in communion with the Lord to say thank you with a grateful heart. So I invite you to know the altar is open for your praise and for your petitions, for your cares and your concerns, but also for your conquering joy that you would want to express. Won't you come? Hallelujah. Kings and kingdoms, kings and kingdoms shall, all pass, shall away. all pass away. But there's something, there's something about, about 
that name. Won't you just call his name again? Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's something. Hallelujah. About that name. Call him, he's master. Master. Savior. Savior. Jesus. Like the fragrance, like the fragrance after, the rain. after the rain. Come on, just lift his name up, declare his name. His name is Jesus. 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 Let all heaven, Let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms. Kings and kingdoms shall all, shall all pass, away. pass away. But there's something, but there's something about, about. But there's something, but there's something. There's something Anybody know something about the name of Jesus? Oh, but there's something, there's something. There's something Hallelujah. Oh, I believe there's a breakthrough now, but there's something. Come on, saints, get in that space. But there's something. Hallelujah, God. We thank you for the name of Jesus. It is an all-sufficient name. It is in the name of Jesus we're able to ask. It is in the name of Jesus we receive. It is in the name of Jesus we find our help, our strength. It is in the name of Jesus we find our hope. It is in the name of Jesus we find ourselves going on a little while longer. We thank you for the name of Jesus and the faithfulness that is proven in Jesus. He's not only our Lord and our Savior, he's our friend. He is our healer. He's our deliverer. He's our comforter. He's our all and all. And so we bless you on today for your son named Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God, that on this day you have awakened us to see the dawning of a brand new day. That we may declare that he is risen and risen indeed. And when he got up, there was power and authority. And when he got up, he reminded us he's not done with us yet. I don't care what the world has articulated over us. I don't care how the world has named us. I don't care what the world has said. I don't care what David, the devil has been whispering in our ears. I don't care what every imp and demon on assignment from hell has said. We serve a God that on today reminds us he's not done with us yet. There's still good ministry, still good work, still good purpose, still a good plan in our lives. There's still a good assignment that we need to understand and an assignment that we need to fulfill. And so, God, I pray for these, my sisters and my brothers. I pray for my siblings here at the altar and across the sanctuary and across these platforms. And on today, if we get nothing else, remember he left a napkin to the side, neatly folded. It was a sign and a symbol. I'm not done. So when we glean from sacred space on today, wherever we may find ourselves, God, may we have the ability to recall the napkin and speak the words, he's not done. When we get home, some of us need to walk around our homes. He's not done yet. There's some people that while we are in their presence, we just need to walk around them. They don't need to know what we're doing. We just need to walk around. you got some children. You need just to walk around. And while you're walking around, just remind, he's not done yet. He's not done yet. Sometimes you need to throw down your pocketbook or your wallet and walk around and say, he's not done yet. Whatever it is, just declare in the name of Jesus, he's not done yet. And so, God, we give you thanks for even in this moment, for burdens being lifted and for the release that has come. We thank you for the sweet relief that is in this place. We thank you for Jesus. And we thank you for the news, Lord God, that is to come. And we thank you for how you promised never to leave us nor forsake us, but be with us at all times. Now hear our petitions, hear our praise, hear our joys and our victories. 
as we offer them in the only name we know to guarantee the answer. And his name is Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we celebrate. In Jesus' name we are victorious. In Jesus' name. And the church said, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But there's something about, but there's something about, but there's something Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, beloved, as we have gathered on this Resurrection Sunday, two things I just want to remind you of. Three things. Let me. <laughs> three things. One, Pastor Wombo, we thank you on today. Pastor Grace United Methodist Church for being with us. Pastor Marvin Wombo, his lovely wife, Lady Anita Wombo, is here, members of Grace, who are with us. We give thanks for your being present with us on today. Our neighbors from across the way. Amen. 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 So we are grateful for your presence on this Resurrection Sunday morning. I remind us that as we exit on today, our ushers will be at the door that we may worship God through giving. Amen. I knew that wouldn't get a whole lot of amen, but I, I'm still going to speak it. Amen. Because worship includes giving. You know, that whole thing about now we're going to pause in the middle. No, we're not pausing. It's part of our worship experience. Amen. 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 And I think, let's see, the, uh, the offering... Pastor Womble, firstly, I think I've covered everything. The last thing I need to do is, beloved, we're going to get ready to go uh, down. And as we are singing, Because He Lives, uh, when I served as an interim pastor at Chevrolet, I came into knowledge of a tradition that was in their church. Um, and that was on a Resurrection Sunday, folks doing the worship services come to decorate the cross. In other words, there ought to be a way that you celebrate this is a day, a high day. And when you arrived, I pray you were given a strand or two of, of ribbon. And as we are singing, because he lives, I invite you as the Spirit leads you, just come forward. And anywhere on the cross the Lord leads you, come and simply bring your strand, tie it in a knot so that it will be there. Amen. And it will be the beginning of our declaring that he is Lord and the excitement and uh, then what you leave will be here for the 1030 service and then they'll come and they'll add their ribbons so that by the end of the day the the cross then becomes something we can celebrate because in our own individual ways we've come forward and we've expressed our joy and our hope so I trust that you would might embrace this amen so let me invite our, our choir to our music ministry to prepare us. We're going to go to Because He Lives. And as we're singing and as you're singing, won't you joyfully come and begin to tie your strand upon the cross? God sent His Son. They called Him Jesus. He came to love.
Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Life is worth the living just because he lives. Beloved, as you see, and I pray that by the end of the day, by the time we go through a 1030 service and others come and we go through, you have done the cross bar, we begin to decorate, that we really will have taken the cross and made it a sign and a symbol of resurrection and joy and celebration on this day. Amen. We thank you for being here on today, and we, we invite you back at 1030 if you'd like to come on back. Amen. Sometimes, you know, a second dip will do you real good. Amen. Amen. But will you be uh, prepare yourselves and as you're able, come to rest on your feet and receive God's blessing as we go down. And we're going to go down on that because he lives. Amen. Amen. You, 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 you went to that little down thing, and I thought we was coming back to the little slow. You know, we're going to do it like that for a minute. Amen. And so as we prepare for God's blessing on, on this holy and gracious day, I know that oftentimes we... We bow our heads and uh, we offer this blessing, but I'm going to invite you to keep your head lifted and uh, as able, I, I'm going to invite you to look around the room at your siblings and let's offer this blessing. Let's talk to each other on today. Amen. So speaking to the atmosphere, speaking to each other, say, Lord, bless my siblings. I thank you on this Resurrection Sunday that you have kept them. You have provided for them. You have made a way for them. Now, as we end this time together, may they walk and live in the knowledge that you're not done yet. Bless them as they go. Bless them as they come. Bless them as they rise and as they lay down. Now, God, Dismiss us that wherever we find ourselves today, we're shouting the victory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Is worth the living just because he lives. Come on, hug somebody, greet somebody in Jesus' name on today. Extend the greeting to someone.